Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095. In this video, we're going to look at sections 7.4 and 7.5, which introduce multiplying polynomials and special products. Special products is a tool that's going to make multiplying our polynomials hopefully a little bit more smooth and, and easier for us. Now, one thing we're already familiar with, uh, and we've seen in previous sections, is multiplying monomials. And we know that monomials are just a specific type of polynomial. They just have a single term. When we've multiplied these, there was no addition or subtraction of terms. There was no uh, different terms. We just had a term times another term. And when we multiply, we just deal, deal with their coefficients. 2 times a negative 1 would be negative 2. x cubed times x would give me 4x's multiplied y times y squared would be 3y's multiplied, because we're using our rules of exponents, right? 3x's times one more x is 4x's. y times 2y's would be y's cubed. So we just end up with a single term. Now, what if we're multiplying a polynomial of second degree, which we can see is a trinomial. It has three terms. And we're going to multiply it by a, a monomial. Well, we can use something that we're familiar with, and that's just distributive property. Distributive property says I have to multiply this term to all the other terms. And I like to use arrows just to keep track of it. So if I do this, negative 3x times 3x squared would be negative 9x cubed. Negative 3x times negative 6x, and negative times a negative is positive. 3 times 6 is 18, and x times x is x squared. And then this times the last term, because I'm distributing it to every term, negative 3x times 2 is negative 6x. So we can use the distributive property as a way to multiply polynomials. Now, what if we have a higher uh, term polynomials. This has two terms. That has two terms. It's more than just distributing. We actually have to distribute twice. Every term in this parentheses has to be multiplied by every term in this parentheses. So we essentially have to do that distribution twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the distribution x times x would be x squared. x times 3 would be 3x. So I multiply this term by all those terms. And then I have to do the same here. So I'm going to use this arrow down here. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And now what I noticed that I didn't have in the last one, because I was only multiplying by a monomial, here I have like terms. So I'm going to combine my like terms. 3x minus 2x is a single x. So I have x squared plus an x minus 6. So I just combined these terms to be that single x. 3x's minus 2x's is just 1x. So after multiplying this out, I got a second degree polynomial, which we know is a trinomial because it has three terms. Now, and we're actually going to see a tool that we can use to maybe simplify that a little bit. Now we're going to look at this here. We have x plus 3. This quantity is cubed. Well, we understand what cubing is. It means we're going to take the value in these parentheses and multiply it by itself so we have three factors. So that means x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x plus 3. And we can see that maybe this is going to be a little tedious. Because I have to multiply all of these terms to all of those terms eventually. So what we want to do is break it down one piece at a time. And this is going to be a little time consuming. So I'm just going to do the same thing I did here for the first two. Because we know multiplication is associative. So we can just do it left to right. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. Now I'm going to do this. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times 3 is 9. So I multiplied these two together. And I can combine those like terms just like I did here, x squared plus 6x plus 9. But what I haven't done to this, these two terms are the same as this, is I have yet to multiply it by that third factor of x plus 3. 
So we can see we have to start all over again in a sense. I have to multiply all these terms by those terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go this way now. x times x squared is x cubed. x times 6x is 6x squared. x times 9 is 9x. I still have to multiply it by 3. Now, when I do it this time, because I have lots more terms to go here, I'm going to line up my values horizontally, or excuse me, vertically. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. Well, I have an x squared, so I'm going to write this positive 3x squared underneath it. And then I have 3 times 6. x is going to give me 18x, so I line up my x's. And then I have 3 times 9, which is 27. Now, because I line them up, I can combine those like terms. Just like I combine these like terms, I just have to a few more of them. So x cubed, nothing to combine there. 6x squared plus 3x squared is 9x's squared. 9x and 18x is 27x's plus 27. So like I said before we began, that was long and tedious. So maybe there are some tools that we can use or some formulas that we can imply that are going to make all this multiplication to get to this value a little bit easier and less tedious. Well, one of the tools that we're going to introduce first has to deal with multiplying binomials, a binomial times a binomial. So this is our example. And our tool is something we call FOIL. And FOIL is a mnemonic device that stands for first, outer, inner, last. First, outer, inner, last. What that means is we can say the first terms in each parenthesis, so we call that f, times the outer terms in each parenthesis, plus the inner terms in each parenthesis, and then the last terms in each parenthesis. Essentially, what this says is distribute. This is times the x and the negative 4. This is times the x and the negative 4. It just helps us keep track of that distribution that we have to do twice. So if I know this mnemonic device, I can say the first terms, x times x. The outer terms, x times negative 4. The inner terms, 3 times x. And the last term, negative 12. And then we can combine like terms, negative 4x and 3x x squared minus x minus 12. And we have it in standard form. It's in descending order. And it's as simplified as we can go. Now, with practice, this will eventually become second nature. But it takes a lot of practice. First, outer, inner, last, FOIL. Another tool we can use, which generally, to write out a box like this and put your terms uh, around the box, can be more time consuming than simply distributing it out. But when you get to higher degree polynomials, this tool might be a better fit. Essentially, we have uh, a box for each term uh, horizontally and vertically. And we just combine them, just like we did when we first learned times tables. We'd have you know, our numbers lined up. And where they would meet is their product. Well, x and x, their product would be x squared. 3 and x their product would be 3x. Negative 4 and x, their product would be 4x. Negative 4 and 3 would be negative 12. And now, if you look what's in this box, it's the same terms we had here. I have an x squared. I have a negative 4x. I have a positive 3x and a negative 12. These are like terms. And if you use this box, these will generally be your like terms, not all the time. Uh, but if you have a binomial of first degree, this is generally what you'll get. And so we can combine these like terms, and you'll get the exact same value we had here. So that's just another tool, a special product. So <clears throat> what I'd like you to uh, try is to multiply this out. But I'm going to give you a heads up here. This multiplication, save it for last. All right? Use that FOIL process first, outer, inner, last, combine your like terms, and then multiply it by 2. Essentially, you still have to use distribution 
to multiply it all by 2. So try this one for yourself. All right, <clears throat> let's look at a, uh, another special product we can use. And it's called squaring a binomial. Now, we had one example where we cubed a binomial. The, uh, it was x plus 3 quantity cubed. And you saw how long and tedious that was. Well, here's a tool that can help us uh, square a binomial if we have something squared, right? a binomial squared. Essentially, it's a formula. You will always get the first term squared and the last term squared. But when you combine the middle terms, you'll get two of their products. And the same thing applies to a difference term, a minus b as an example. So let's look at this one here. And by using the formula, I could just simply say, well, this term squared, this term squared, and the middle term is going to be twice this product. But before I do that, let's do it FOIL. Let's get used to FOIL. Because we can use FOIL here if, we're not, if we can't remember a formula. When we square something, we need to write it out. It says this value times itself, two factors. So I write out two factors, and now I can use FOIL. The first terms, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last term. 1 times 1 is 1. I can combine these terms. And notice there's two of them, and there are, they are identical. 4x squared, 2x and 2x is 4x plus 1. So this, using FOIL, first, outer, inner, last, we got 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. What would have happened if we just used the formula? What if we had it committed to memory? Well, it's addition, so I'm going to use this one. The first term squared is 4x squared. Twice their product, a and b, so 2x times 1 is 2x. Twice is 4x. And then the last term squared, 1 squared is 1. So hopefully we know, hey, if I can commit that to memory, I can come to the answer without all the work and maybe making a sign error or combining incorrectly. It helps us uh, move through the steps a lot faster. So <clears throat> I want you to try this one. And for practice, use FOIL. Write it out as two binomials and use FOIL. And then, without looking at the formula, try to do it using the formula. Commit it to memory, and it'll help you a little bit. All right, <clears throat> sometimes we'll have the sum and difference of terms. And what that means is we have the same terms, a and b, a and b. So the terms are the same. But the difference is they have different signs. So we have the sum of terms and the difference of terms. And that's why it's called the sum and difference of terms. When we use FOIL on this, if we do that a times a is a squared, uh, a times negative b is negative ab, b times a is positive ab, and uh, b times negative b is negative b squared. When we go to combine our like terms in the middle, well, negative AB plus AB would be no more ABs. They essentially cancel each other out. It's actually a pretty nice and convenient thing that when they have different signs, that middle term is going to cancel out if these terms are the same. They have to be the same. If they were different values, not going to work. All right, so if we eliminate that, I have A squared minus B squared. Well, that's what the formula says. Whenever we have the sum or difference of terms, we're going to get a squared minus b squared. There is no middle term. Now, if we want to define a few things, we can define these. And they have a special name. These are called conjugates. When they have the same values for our terms, but of opposite signs, we call these conjugates. This is the conjugate of that. They have different signs between them. One's a sum, one's a difference. They are called conjugates. When we multiply conjugates, those middle terms always cancel out. So let's look at this one. It might be a little intimidating because we have a coefficient in front of our variable, and we have some fractions in here. But what I recognize is 5y and 5y are the same, and 1 half and 1 half are the same. The only difference is the sign in between them. These are conjugates. So I can use that formula. I can say 5y squared, my a squared, which would be 25y squared. 5 squared is 25. 
y squared is y squared. And the 1 half squared, that's my b value, 1 half squared would be 1 quarter. A half of a half is a quarter. And it's always the difference. This term right here actually is defined uh, by a term, and it's called the difference of squares. And if we think about it, we're taking the difference of two squares. Hence, it's named the difference of squares. This was the product of a square. This was a product of the square. We end up with the difference of squares. So here we have 2x minus 1 times the quantity 2x plus 1. Recognize that they are conjugates. And you could foil it out and see that the middle term is going to cancel. Or you can just use that formula. Commit it to memory. This one you're going to see many, many times over and over as you progress through math. All right, let's look at an application. For this application, we're going to employ our application strategies. We're going to read it, we're going to read it, we're going to read it, and then we're going to try to assemble it together. So for a quilt, Beth needs to find the area of a fabric that has four square corners cut from it. Find the area if the original square had sides of 12 inches, and she cuts off squares of side x inches. Now, if I read it again, I'm assessing we started with uh, an area of a fabric that has four square corners cut from it. So we're going to take a square fabric, and we're going to cut out the corners, four square corners. We want to find the area of the uh, original, uh, if the original square had sides of 12 inches. And she cuts off these squares of side x. So we have an illustration here. And we'll just come over here to the illustration. We know that we had a square piece of fabric. And we cut out square corners from that fabric. So here's our illustration. We're also told that the original square of fabric was 12 inches by 12 inches. And we're also told that these corners were squares of side x. So we have side x here, side x here and here, 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 and here. So let's think about what we have and try to piece it together. So what if I want to find the distance from here to here? Well, I can find that distance by saying, well, this 12 inches had a piece x long and a piece x long cut from it. So this distance, and I'll just draw an arrow over here, is 12 minus the two x's that were cut from it. Well, since it's a square, all the sides are the same. So that means this distance is also 12 minus 2x. If this distance is 12 minus 2x, so is this distance here. So we're working with polynomials. So obviously, we're going to multiply some polynomials together. So what if I want to find? Just the nice inside square. It's a nice square. And we know squares, how to find the area of squares. And we know it has side of 12 minus 2x. Well, this side times that side will give me the inside square. 12 minus 2x, actually I'll write it this way, times itself, 12 minus 2x. So we have a squared binomial. This is what was introduced in this section, so we should know how to work with it. Maybe we want to foil it out, or maybe we want to use the formula a squared plus or minus 2 of these products and the last term squared, plus 4 squared or 4x squared. Anyways, so we have that inside piece. Well, we also have these outside pieces that are still left. Well, if we know this distance to be 12 minus 2x, and we know this distance to be x to find the area of a rectangle, we would take x times 12 minus 2x, one side times the other. But there are four of these sides, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there are 4 times the x times this quantity. Now, the area of the inside box we found was this. So we can square this binomial. The area of this was 4x times the quantity 12 minus 2x. So we can multiply a monomial times a binomial, something we experienced in this section. And if we add the two together, we will have the area of the box, or the square, excuse me. Now, some of you might realize, hey, there's a shorter way to get to this. 
And there is. And this is why we do application problems. This impl in implies the information we learned in this section. But story problems, their purpose is to get you to think critically. And if you're familiar with these things and you do enough of the practice and your understanding of applications is strong, you can implore that critical thinking. And maybe you want to say, well, if the original square had sides of 12, it had an area of 144 square inches. But I'm going to cut out an area that's x by x. So I'm removing, so I use subtraction, x by x, which is x squared. There are four of those corners. So I'm going to take an original area of 144, and I'm going to subtract the four corners of area x squared. And to give you a heads up, this is actually the answer. So if we can critically think and maybe find an easier way to come to the solution, well, maybe that's the method we want to imply. But we also want to know how we use the methods of squaring this binomial and multiplying a monomial times a binomial to come to this uh, answer here. So the answer is this inches squared. So what I'm going to ask you to do is foil this out or use the special product formula Multiply this out, combine like terms, and make sure you get this answer here. So this has been section 7.4 and 7.5. Thank you for watching.